Hi everyone, welcome back to this session. I'm really excited to be talking to the wonderful Dr. Genevieve Van Lub, and we're going to be chatting all about highly sensitive children. I know we've got another speaker on this topic, Kate Hunter, but both ladies have something different to say and they're both amazing. So I hope you're going to watch both sessions and connect with them both. Before I launch in with Genevieve, I'm just going to read a little bit of her bio because she is truly amazing. And I just want you to fully appreciate the amazing expert speakers that we have on this summit. So Dr. Genevieve is a clinical psychologist, a conscious parenting coach and author, and she specializes in supporting parents to enjoy a more joyful and harmonious relationship with their highly sensitive children. She is the author of Happy Parent, Happy Child, 10 Steps to Stress-Free Parenting. So definitely get that book, folks, okay? And having worked for more than 20 years as a psychologist in the UK in the National Health Service, private practice and corporate environments, Genevieve has emerged as a leading global advocate for HSPs and the gifts that high sensitivity brings. And she's been featured on the website of Dr. Elaine Aaron. And I know you will have heard a lot of the, the speakers reference Dr. Elaine. So I think she's how a lot of us found out that we are HSPs. We did the little test on her website. Um, I might actually stick that link below here as well. If anybody's still on, you know, on the fence and not quite sure if they're a HSP, that was definitely the first way I found out that I was. So um, as you can see, she's an absolute expert, Dr. Genevieve, and she's like, She's amazing. So definitely connect with her. All the links for her are going to be below this talk. And the first question I want to ask you, Genevieve, today, thank you so much for being with us, is what drew you to specialise in working with the parents of highly sensitive children? Thank you, Jen, for such a wonderful introduction. It's such a pleasure to be here and be part of this summit. So you've already given quite a lot of my background, but I will sort of repeat a bit of my background context to let you know how I got into high sensitivity. So I was working in the British National Health Service in a CAMS team. So that's Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services, CAMS. And as a psychologist, I would get referrals of children and teenagers. They'd come in from GPs, from pediatricians, social workers and schools. And children were coming to me either with emotional difficulties like anxiety or anger, or they were manifesting in behavioral challenges like not cooperating or meltdowns or defiance or clinginess at school, you know, not wanting to go into school, or maybe sleep, sleeping issues, eating issues, issues with siblings. So I'd get a whole range of difficulties. And my job really with these young people is to gain their trust and really get to the bottom, get to the root of what's causing this. And so when young people come to me, one of the things that I often see is they feel so misunderstood and not seen or heard. And there was a lot of children coming to me around this time, it's about 10 years ago, and they just had a different quality about them. It was almost there was a presence and they'd sit in front of me. And with some of these children, I call them like old souls. Some of them just seem to have, I don't know, presence, quality. It's almost like they were looking through, through me, a wisdom that was beyond their years and I also do art with children and young people to connect with them. And some of them were drawing some really quite incredible artwork around, you know, their worries around, say, the planet. And I saw how many children were really worried about climate change and, you know, the loss of species of animals. So these children often had a real sense of empathy um, um, and a real sense of fairness and justice. So I I thought they're not AS autistic and they're not always ADHD. So who are these children? There's something different. That took me on the quest to research. And that's when I found Dr. Elena Aaron's work and read her book, The Highly Sensitive Child. And it was a total aha moment. I thought that's what it is. These children have more finely tuned nervous systems and they're much more responsive and reactive to the environment around them. So they're processing sounds, smells, temperatures, emotions. They're like tuning forks that are constantly scanning their environment. And this, this really explained, it also explained myself as well, because I thought looking back, 
I'm absolutely one of those children as well. I was a highly sensitive children. I was one of the more sort of introverted ones, one who was cautious. They used to call me shy. I'd stand on the sidelines. But there's also extroverted, highly sensitive children that I work with too. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I found that I have such a passion for working with these children, but particularly with parents, because what I found is that when parents are really willing and open to making change and to really understand their child's temperament, and when they can learn the tools, the ripple effects that that can have and the understanding of these children, I was beginning to see quite rapid shifts quite quickly when parents are open and willing to take responsibility and really, really get to know their children's temperament and recognize that there's nothing wrong with their children. It's often just there's a few tweaks which are needed in the family system or in the school system, in the environment, and that these children need to be really understood and that they don't always go by the conventional ways of parenting. So now I specialize mainly with working with parents with highly sensitive children um, because often it's the parents who actually want the support. They're the ones who are finding it really challenging because sensitive children can be so demanding to parent. They can be so intense with their emotions. They're often big reactors or they can be very withdrawn. So I see parents often as the space holders of the family. And if you can support the family, support the parents, then the ripple effects that that has on children is immense. So that's why I'm so passionate about this work. And also for us to know that highly sensitive children, although they come to me with challenges and this the sort of negative side of sensitivity, I really want parents and the children themselves to, to really get to know their gifts because high sensitivity comes with so many strengths, which can be unlocked when you start to clear all the negative sides of it, the overstimulation and the overwhelm and the big intense emotions and managing all of that and the meltdowns, the strengths are like creativity, access to intuition, empathy, big picture thinking, really observant people and so if we can help this next generation to really be mis be understood and seen and heard and to know that they have gifts and strengths and that there's nothing wrong with them I just I feel so passionate about that as a mission to really supporting this next generation amazing oh, I loved everything you said there it's just amazing and you're so articulate you put it all so lovely as well <laughs> I love what you said about the the kids, like they have like fine tuning forks as well. I could really relate to that. And just like you said about being like kind of old before their time, wise souls. And I definitely, you know, meet people, you know, fellow HSPs all the time and kids. And you can tell, you know, like you said, there is a special quality. <laughs> they just feel to be quite wise, you know. So yeah, I loved everything you said there. And I could totally understand your passion and your mission. It's it's amazing work that you do. Um one thing you did mention actually, I'm gonna jump to a question, was that you touched on obviously the negatives, you know, the things that are happening when the kids are out of alignment. I'm just wondering if somebody's listening today and they have a highly sensitive child who's having like meltdowns or tantrums maybe it's in the supermarket or so anywhere and you're at the end of your tether what like what is a sweet advice that you can give for that kind of situation yeah those those are the situations that are really challenging for parents because as I've said before highly sensitive children can be very very intense because they are deep processes, they feel everything so deeply, is a very intense experience being around them. Their emotions can be big. They've got big thoughts. They've got big reactions. So I just want to acknowledge how challenging it is and how parents often feel very judged. They can feel very alone or isolated and feel like they're the only parents who are going through this. And I want to say that I have seen so many parents like this over the course of my career and my work that I want parents to know that they're not alone and that there are ways through this and I think in an example for example when let's say a typical example you just gave in the in the supermarket 
when your child is having a huge meltdown, the first thing you always do as a parent is self-regulation. So the thing about these children, it can be catching. You know how it is when someone's really activated, when a child's really being pushing boundaries or being rude or emotionally reactive or shouting or screaming or crying. It's very contagious to be around that. And so for a parent, it's not easy because it can really push our deepest buttons. And that's what I find with many of my clients is they see themselves as very calm, rational, logical people until they have children. And these children seem to be able to push their deepest, deepest buttons. And it almost brings out a dark side of them or a sort of side of them they didn't know existed, which is often like someone who gets very frustrated or irritable or even kind of shouts so the first step is self-regulation and that's like a lifelong practice and it's one of the things that I work on with parents and it's how do we learn how to take a pause in the moment take a few slow deep breaths and just slow ourselves down so that we are rooted and grounded because an activated triggered parent is going to struggle to really hold the space for their highly sensitive child. So that's the first thing. The second thing is in the moment, your child's had a meltdown. So what do you do? They're in the supermarket. Obviously, you have to get them to a safe place. Every sensitive child is unique. There's no one size fits all response. And this is the thing. You have to be very flexible with these children. So it may be for your child that they need some touch or some help to ground and some very soothing words of validation to say to them, you know, I can see how, how angry you are not right now. I can see how upset you are right now. I'm here for you. So it's very gentle, very soothing, maybe a holding or maybe a hug. Now that works for some children, but I have worked with many highly sensitive children where that's really triggering and actually escalates the meltdown more. So often parents, the best thing you can do is to say nothing get them to a safe space and just be a presence, just be calm and just wait for them to calm down. Some children hate being looked at, so they feel a lot of shame, very self-conscious. So it may be that you just, you're just a soothing presence for them where possible. And then later on, when they've calmed down from their meltdown, in the moment is not the time, by the way, to discipline a child. They, they're not going to be able to hear you. Their rational, logical brain is offline. The highly sensitive child is just not there. So as much as you might want to reason with them and try and discipline them and tell them what they should do and try to get them to behave, that's not the time to teach them the right way. The time to teach them is later on when you're both calm and we call this rupture and repair. And that comes from Dr. Dan Siegel. If you haven't read his book, The Whole Brain Child, brilliant. It's all about the neuroscience of children's brains. So it's so important. How many of us as children, I know that I didn't get this myself, this thing of where the adult comes back to you later on after a rupture, after a conflict, after you've had an argument and comes back and sits down with you and says, let's look what, what just happened earlier. And I'm going to say sorry and I'm going to be humble and, and apologize and let's reflect on it. What could we do differently next time? I really feel, and it's often something that we forget because we just want to forget about it, but it's so important to revisit what happened and really let the child process, your sensitive child process. And all sensitive children process in different ways. Some are going to process through play, through art, and some will process through chatting about it. So finding the ways for your child. And then the, the last piece of that is um, prevention with meltdowns. So with highly sensitive children, one of the difficulties with them is they get overwhelmed and overstimulated more quickly and their nervous systems get dysregulated. So one of the things is to help them to keep, and I call it the inner bucket, like there's an inner bucket in all of us, which is like our nervous system and it gets full up of all the stimulation over the day. And so how can you help your child's inner bucket to stay at a point where it's regulated but not tipping over so that they're having this meltdown or crying or or even internalizing the emotions so I do a lot of work with parents on prevention and that's looking at making sure they've had enough downtime enough movement exercise because we discharge 
emotions through our body. So movement, dance, sport, all really good for, for kids. And also preparing them in advance for, say, that shopping trip. So actually, highly sensitive children are often not very good with surprises. Yeah. Because they're deep processes, it's helpful when you prepare them in advance so that you can say to them that we're not going to buy that magazine today, but we will buy that small toy or, or not at all. But preparing them in advance for what to expect and what's going to happen will help your highly sensitive child to process in advance, which is really so helpful for them because they've processed it. And then when it comes to the shopping trip, there's no sudden in the moment surprises. And I want that toy or I want that dress or I want this. You've already put the boundaries in and the rules. And one thing I know about so many highly sensitive children is they love to know what's happening. They love routines. They love structure. I'm the same. I love my routines. I love my schedules. I like to know what's happening. So our children are just the same. So where possible, no, no surprises. And I think the last thing I would say on that is for parents, just, just be kind to yourselves, you know, in these moments. It's going to happen. You're going to lose it sometimes. And many parents I know, they've shouted, they've lost it in the moment. Be kind to yourself, honour yourself. And I think this is, and I want to talk a little bit more about how our children push our buttons and how that can help us to kind of use that as an opportunity to evolve, really, not just as parents, but as human beings. You know, this is what children are here for. Yeah, do you want to do you want to go on and 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 just talk a bit like why do you think that these highly sensitive children do push our buttons so much and trigger us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because when I work with parents, and one of the things that I've noticed over the years, when I actually acknowledge and we talk about these buttons that get pushed, I almost feel parents exhale with a sigh of relief. They go, "Oh, she gets it. She gets it. Okay." Yes, I say these children push our deepest buttons and it's like, thank goodness, someone understands because parents can feel a lot of shame and a lot of guilt and they beat themselves up a lot because they're not being the calm parents that they want to be or that they imagine they would be. And acknowledging again how difficult it is to parent sensitive children who can be very particular, even like little scratches on their fingers or a a speck of dirt on their clothes or tight socks or their hair doesn't feel right to us can feel very trivial, but to a highly sensitive child, these things can feel like the end of the world. And often what I find with these children, they can be very strong willed. They can push against you, push against the boundaries, and push and push and won't take no for an answer. And they can wear you down and push your deepest buttons. And so why do they do that? I think that what these sensitive children do, and they don't necessarily do this consciously, but they they push parts of us, push deeper parts of us, which are not healed. Um, patterns, triggers, often unresolved traumas. So in a way, I often say that highly sensitive children, if we can use these really challenging parenting moments, really difficult triggering moments as opportunities to learn, to grow and evolve, to learn more about ourselves, to become more self-aware and use these children as mirrors to our own patterns, our own triggers and our own unresolved stuck traumas, then what they are are teachers because they actually shine a light on what we call, what Carl Jung called the shadow, you know, the shadow side, the darkest side of us. They bring up to the surface parts of us that we have pushed down that we have not integrated. And I always say that often, let's say you've got a five-year-old daughter, that five-year-old, when they're pushing and pushing, can trigger your own inner five-year-old, that inner five-year-old who didn't get heard, who didn't get seen. And so often, or your eight-year-old son triggering your inner eight-year-old. Because when we're growing up, parts of our, when we have any traumas, mini traumas or big traumas, you know, the little T's or the big T's, 
these parts of us get frozen and stuck in our nervous system. And if we haven't had a space, we haven't had conscious parents to hold the space, to tolerate the intensity of our emotions as children, then parts of us get stuck, gets frozen. And then we've grown up adults. We look like adults. We are adults. But there's parts of us that are not fully healed. And so I often say highly sensitive children are like a fast track to our spiritual evolving and growth because they bring up in us so quickly the stuff that we can't hold down anymore and that really needs to be looked at so it's not just about parenting this is about us as humans going on our own inner healing journey and starting to really look at what in us is still playing out because when we get reactive it's always the past playing out in the present if we've got a strong activation that's something traumatic or something challenging from our past in our nervous system so what a gift actually at some level these highly sensitive children are and I tell you why it's the highly sensitive children because they're so attuned they're so they're so tuned into their parents they're so able to they are the tuning forks they really zone in on their parents um facial expressions if their parents are not being authentic they almost pull them up on it in a way they they're so into authenticity these children you you can't get away with anything if you're if you're pushing things down and not being authentic then these children are going to pull it out of you in some way so it's hard work it's really challenging and no wonder parents get angry and reactive around these children it's just the intensity but also when we can see it as the button pushes, as opportunities for our own evolving, and we're able to take responsibility for our own healing journey, then I think, I mean, I feel like this is why we're here. We're all here to evolve and grow together. And there's different paths to evolution. And for some people, that path, part of that path can be being a parent amazing I love all your wisdom I could listen to you all day because I know obviously HSP was not around when I was a child and I certainly didn't have parents who came back to me and said you know discussed what had happened you know and for me I didn't really have meltdowns I was more probably withdrawn so I loved how you've like given different solutions for the different types of meltdowns you know because we're all different you know some kids would want a hug some want to be left alone like I love the way you've kind of gone around the whole kind of spectrum of these children because Mm. like you say no HSP is the same you know obviously we're going to have similar qualities with our nerves but you know everyone's Mm. different so I I love that Mm. and um yeah even as an adult I'm taking away a lot of what you're saying and kind of going "Mm." and it's quite interesting that I still hate surprises like if somebody gave me a surprise party that would be my idea of hell I like to know what's coming Mm -hmm. um, and I'm quite organized as well and maybe that's all connected you know that kind of being organized uh, because we like that sense of structure for our nerves we don't want to be like thrown off so yeah it's Mm -hmm. absolutely fascinating so Mm -hmm. everything you say I'm like light bulb light bulb light bulb (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) amazing um What's one thing that you would want every parent of a highly sensitive child to know and to take away from today's chat? Okay, the first thing, I think the word acceptance, unconditional acceptance, both of ourselves as parents and of our highly sensitive children. So I think I've already talked today about these children can take us on our own journeys of learning to be more emotionally attuned to ourselves to understand ourselves more and I think it's about how we accept ourselves because so many of us as humans we don't feel good enough at our core we've not felt worthy and that's not just for parents that's for all of us this epidemic of I'm not worthy I don't feel like I'm worthy of existence or this or that that not good enough feeling And of course, that gets magnified in parenting when it can feel like you're doing everything wrong or doing a lot that's not what you want to be doing. So to learn how to accept ourselves and to go on a journey of 
self-kindness and compassion and to learn to really know ourselves and to learn that all our feelings are absolutely acceptable and there's no such thing as a wrong feeling we need to allow space for all of it because that's how we heal the more we can say okay anger's here anger's here today I'm not in a good place and that's okay you know we all have bad days all of us and sometimes we just wake up don't we in a bad mood and sometimes we just have to get through the day and other days we feel better so I think it's about being really learning to be present to ourselves and accept and tune in to ourselves in the moment. So that was the first part of acceptance, acceptance of ourselves and our journey and our emotions and our physical sensations and our thoughts. And so, oh, another thing I will just add to that in terms of awareness for parents, which I wanted to say was that we also need to learn to slow down our reactions because of us go on autopilot. Yeah. when we react because it's something from the past and we get just we, in the moment anger comes through us and we just say something horrible or we we shout or or we go as you said withdrawn or we just go into ourselves so learning to slow ourselves down and learn to respond rather than react is such a helpful thing to learn to do to create space and sometimes that means you need to take a break when you're triggered and go and take a walk around the block splash your face with water yeah. whatever it needs whatever you need in that moment and I think this is all about the starting to accept ourselves and love ourselves peace is that we can learn to know what we need in the moment and we can give ourselves that we know how to nurture ourselves because all of us are learning how to reparent ourselves and I'm not saying a lot of people had very good parents in the past and lots of people have had not so good parenting or it's been a mixture but I really, I've seen in my work, every one of us really needs to learn this work of how we nurture and nourish ourselves because self-kindness is something new that we're learning as a, a collective human species. So I really want to emphasize to parents, self-acceptance, learning to be kind to yourself and nourish yourself and give yourself what you need in the moment. And then the other piece is unconditional acceptance of our highly sensitive children. I know that often many parents come to me and they feel like, why is my child so difficult? Why can't they just brush their teeth or just go to bed when I want them to? Why can't they just cooperate? Or why won't they just go into the school, into the school like everyone, you know, every other child? Why aren't they like other children? And what we need to do is to just relax and give space for those feelings, but also accept the child that we've we've been given in all their uniqueness and all their special qualities. And we need to not only look at the challenging aspects of them, but we also need to keep looking at their beauty, their strengths. Highly sensitive child children can be incredibly loving, compassionate, caring, heart opening, fun, sparkly, amazing, um, you know, emotionally aware, creative imaginative children they can be some of the most amazing adults we know that so let's just accept them unconditionally for who they are rather than projecting and no parent wants to do this but we all can project our own wants onto our children we just have to be aware but let's just try and accept who they are and work with that and in that process we're going to grow and evolve so much it's going to be such uh, a deep journey in a way it's a, a deep journey of um, growing and learning so I really have a lot of respect for every parent out there doing this work especially when you've got a highly sensitive child I know I, I have got one myself by the way I have a, a highly sensitive child so I also feel sometimes that I teach what I need to learn as well and it's not easy at times and I really empathize with every parent and I know that every parent is doing the best job that they can do so um yeah I'm that's uh, that's what I'm going to say but I was going to talk about then why I have a passion now because I've been working one-to-one -one with many many for many years but I'm actually 
really passionate about parents come, coming together more in community into groups because I think one of the issues is that we feel so alone often or we feel so different or we feel like we're getting it wrong and I really believe that coming together in communities and that's online communities as well and finding more of our tribe is really going to be a great resource for many of us in the years to come so I'm very passionate about moving from one-to-one -one work to a more group model I feel like that's where we need to evolve to I think parents we were all born in tribes we were all born in groups I think we've become separated and disconnected and I feel like you know all the bad things that people say about social media and online I just see the tremendous gift that we have with having like this online resource with the summit I'm so happy about all the incredible people that I've met globally through having the technology so I'm really excited and enthused about helping to bring parents together so that they can do the same connect with other parents who are maybe going through similar things to you and really support each other you know, with with your highly sensitive children oh, I love that and I think yeah you, like you say you can feel isolated and alone if you're not talking about it outside of your family and I think if you meet somebody in the same boat it just is a problem like halved and then you know you don't feel so alone or like you're failing at something so yeah I love that you're taking your work more into a community um area because obviously there's two there's two billion HSPs on the planet and they are you know these children are the future generations so how amazing if you know, we can let them thrive and, you know, we flourish by looking after them as well. Like what an amazing future world that can be. So I love that you're kind of going on that journey and yeah, like, like say social media, it is great for connecting. That's definitely one of the positives. I know it's not all positive, but I think it's, it's great in the sense that we can connect and I would urge anyone at the summit to go away and connect with each other do like leave your links in the chat box i want this to be like a growth experience for everyone a learning experience but also a networking experience because i want all the hsps to come together and connect you know and you're just going to feel so much better when you're surrounded by your people <laughs> you know you're not going to feel so alone and you're going to just get excited about who you are and you know it'd be amazing to meet more parents as well and realize you know what your child is amazing and unique and you could help each other with, with ways to you know to deal with things and I love all the amazing wisdom that you've shared today I just wish you had spoken to my parents about 40 years ago but uh, honestly I think this is such a valuable session for everyone it's so it's so so much um light bulb no moments for me and so many golden nuggets so Thanks so much, uh, Genevieve, for everything today. What, like, if people want to get in touch with you going forward, like, where are your favorite places to hang out? Are you more a website person or an email person or a social media person? So you can find me on LinkedIn and on Instagram. And I also write a newsletter called the HSP Revolution, which is on Substack. So you can find that newsletter. I write that regularly. And that's also a way of bringing together the community. Um, yeah, and you can, I have an email address if you wanted to work. I still do one-to-one -one work. So if you wanted to get in touch with me, you can book in a free discovery call and we can chat about how we might work together. And also look out because I really do want to create a, <clears throat> as I was talking about community, a group course for parents. I have run group courses in the past and They've been really successful. So I really am very, that's what I'm working on at the moment is kind of a course for parents of highly sensitive children. So if you are interested in that, then you can message me because I will put you on a waiting list. And whilst I'm just creating that, and then I will let you know as soon as it's open. I also run um, a retreat. I've also run in-person HSP person retreats. So that's not just for parents, that's for anyone in the UK. And I, I run that alongside um, my fellow colleague, Jules DeVito, and we will be running an in-person UK retreat next June 2024. So if you're interested in that, you can also register for an early bird ticket. 
amazing i love that you have so many different ways of helping people it's amazing so do check all the links below the video folks we'll have as many links for genevieve as we can if not definitely like sign up to our newsletter to be kept in the loop and you know contact her don't be shy to reach out to any of these amazing speakers they want to connect with you and if they can help you they, they will so don't be shy just definitely reach out connect with them and you know get on their email list they have so much wisdom as you know and I loved your your final words about acceptance like accepting ourselves you know not reacting because <laughs> it can be easy to react if somebody is having a meltdown you know just kind of that self-regulation and mm -hmm. acceptance of the child as well for their amazing qualities so I, I thought it was a lovely message to end on so I just want to thank you again for coming along today and sharing your pearls of wisdom I've really enjoyed talking to you and yeah I just want to wish everybody else you know enjoy the rest of the summit and yeah do reach out and connect with the lovely Genevieve thank you so much Genevieve thank you so much Jen it's been such an honor to be here and I'm so excited about this summit and the future connections and networking amazing take care see you soon folks thank you